Hey everyone, I'm Bria Jones with the Bold Care team, and I'm really excited to be able to show you this powerful digital portfolio called Bulb. Bulb is a place where students and educators have a platform to showcase their work, their interests, and their passions. So for your students, they can put their best foot forward and give depth to their knowledge and proof to their work. And I really do find that the best way to understand Bulb is to see it through examples. So I'm going to take the next few minutes and show you a couple of my favorites. We're going to start here with Darrell Walker on his profile page. And you'll notice that it's starting to be personalized. I can know a little bit about him just by looking at his landing page. He loves music. He probably has a funny personality. And he has a lot of great work in his portfolio. We allow Bulb to be a place that can be personalized because we want students and educators perceiving their portfolio as theirs, their place to tell and showcase their unique story. So these tiles down there, uh, down here, are what we call collections. And collections are like folders. They're ways to organize your work. You can organize them by theme or topic. And one of the powers of Bulb is its flexibility and organization because when you think about a portfolio over a lifetime, you want something that's going to grow and adapt. And the way that we have our collections and how you can organize them and drag and drop and reorganize at any time, it allows that portfolio to look different at a younger age and then grow with you and morph as you change and have different audiences. So once you open up one of these collections, you will start to find sub-collections and pages. And pages is where the work really takes place. So a page is where your ideas come to life and you pull together all kinds of multimedia and text, videos, images, interactive web content. We want people creating in lots of different ways and then we want them to assemble all of those into bulk. And then they have this bold page that shares their ideas in a really unique and interesting way. And then they get to publish those pages and determine the audience who gets to see their work. So because you wouldn't expect that you would only want one single audience for your portfolio, there may be pieces that are work in progress, that you're collaborating and getting feedback from your teacher or your peers. And you may um, have other work that is still in draft form that only you can see. You may have other stuff that you want, say, a special group to be able to see, or maybe the entire public. So this allows you that control of every piece within your portfolio. You'll also notice that Durrell has a lot of work that goes beyond the classroom walls. So he has his collections like Spanish and math and um, engineering, but he also has his band in his career explorations, in his college admissions, extracurriculars. These are all added to his portfolio because they're all a part of his story. Learning doesn't just stop within the classroom walls. It goes beyond, and it allows him to be able to express and pull together all of those things that make up his story into his own portfolio. Now we're going to take a look at a younger student. This is Caden, and Caden has been developing his portfolio over the last three years of school, and he has started to collect a lot of really great things and starting to understand and see his own growth, which is incredibly important in a portfolio. If you open up his writing collection, you'll notice he has captured his very first writing piece ever. And you'll see in here that he just simply took a picture and uploaded it into Bulb. He's starting to learn to um, his letters and kind of sounding out words. And then it progresses into him creating and um, illustrating some of his first books. Then he starts to do some research projects and he actually has created this great rainforest research paper where he uses our drawing tool in our iOS app to annotate an image and then type out and add imagery to the research that he did about the rainforest. And as he builds and adds writing in here, he's always reminded of where he has come and all the things that he's been working on in regards to writing. So it's a great way to have regular reflection and visual showing of growth 
for him to understand how much he has grown in his writing skills. He also captures unique things like his passion project. He did a passion project on movie making and he's able to track the process, the journey along the way. So he starts with his timeline and his checklist and then he includes his notes and then some drafts, um, videos that he's created about movie making and he has his final presentation and then has his rubric here so he knows what he's working towards. These are all captured in his portfolio and if you can imagine, in high school, if that passion still remains, um, he may be able to kind of trend and see all the things that he has been working on in his education that brings him to maybe a focus in movie making or design or something that's related to that. Now, Bulb is not just for students. It's also for educators as well. And I would say that educators use Bulb in two main ways. One is truly as a professional portfolio, a way for them to track their goals and growth and reflection just as their students are doing. Most of our teachers get evaluations, they have their own goals, they're constantly learning as well, and a portfolio is a great place to capture all of those. Jessa Jones here even has micro-credentials. These are um, an online personalized course that she took about observation and feedback. And she was able to capture the pieces of the course, including the summary and then actually having examples and artifacts embedded, whether it was a picture of notes or embedded student artifact documents or just a picture of a, of a note or a screenshot of an email and then has that reflection piece of what she's learned. And then she's able to share, share out this entire collection with the evaluating institute, and then they provided her a badge that she displays in bulb, along with the evidence of the work that she did in that. And then she's able to kind of track the learning that she's done over time in her portfolio. The second way that Jessa uses her portfolio is really a place to design lessons. So it's such a dynamic resource that we see a lot of teachers who love to use Bulb as a place to put together a certain experience for students. So here you'll see she has her unit goals, her inquiry questions for her students, and then has some embedded material, the stages of mitosis video, and then a Prezi presentation, and then she documents the classic assignment with some examples in there for the students. Now, students could come and revisit this page at any time and be able to do that work at home and get all of those resources. She could use this as, um, as a placeholder if she has a substitute and all of this content is there right there for her students. And so um, we have a lot of teachers who use it as kind of a flipped classroom model, but because of its dynamic way and easy way to upload so much multimedia and create this very particularly interactive experience, Bulb sometimes becomes this beautiful place to capture lessons. I also have been working with a teacher who said, finally, when she got all of our lessons in Bulb, she wasn't having to recreate them every year and every semester. They were there, and then she could just do tweaks and um, reshare them out in different ways. And so it really did save her time and energy, and she loved having all of her lessons there. It's also a great and easy way for you to be able to share your lessons with supervisors and your peers um, within our group functionality so that um, there's more collaboration among teams. So that just gave you a little bit of a taste of um, what you can do in Bulb, and there's so much power to it. I hope I inspired you a little bit um, by just showing you those three examples. So I want to direct you to our Bulb library because this is a place where you can find so many more examples and templates. And I think you're really going to love that resource. And so let me show you the two easiest ways to get to our library. The first is to go to your web browser and type in www.bulbapp.com library. And that'll take you directly to our library. The other way is when you're logged into your portfolio, you can click on the hamburger menu, which is that three lines icon in the, um, the upper part of the page and go to more, and under more, there is a selection there called Bulb Library, and that will take you to the library as well. 
And once you're in the library, you will find a great amount of content that will hope to inspire you. Everything from tutorials to templates that you can use directly in your classroom to content that's divided by age and grade level to and content that's divided by topic. You'll also find our master courses that um, are put together as resources to help you on certain areas. And so this is such a great place to go back to often because we are continuously building our library. And as you create work and your students create work, we also want you to let us know things that you guys are really excited about because maybe we'll put your work in the library as well. So your next activity is to spend a few minutes in the library exploring. And remember, Bolt really is a beautiful place to display all of your work and resources and artifacts in a beautiful and easy to use platform. Have fun.